Spear, Regina Sailing, family and friends and all others who want to learn a little bit about celestial navigation. So far we are still on our principal problem to solve our latitude. But we've come quite far. So we know that if we have our own position and then the position of the Sun on the Earth, well that's where the beam of the Sun goes directly through the surface to the center of the Earth, if we can determine this distance, the zenith distance, while the Sun is due south of us, then we can determine the latitude. All we have to do is now to understand what the declination is and find the solution where, what is the declination? What is the latitude of the Sun itself? So, first we had this problem with the horizon, the corrections, we've done that. Secondly, we have found out when the time of noon is at our position, so that's when we should shoot the Sun. Of course, we can also shoot the Sun when it's at the highest during the day. But this time to arc calculation is very useful also for other problems, especially when it comes to the planets and the stars. So we can tick this off so we know when noon is. So now the question is, what's the declination? And at the very end, we'll talk about the longitude. So the declination can roughly be found even in the Reed's Almanac, which is used by many sailors sailing in tidal waters in northern Europe. So this is what the old seamen did. They looked at the approximate date that we have, and then they checked uh, what the declination is. It's uh, north in the summer and south in the winter. And you get a declination out of the Reed's, which is accurate to one full degree. So if your latitude is good enough for one full degree, you can even use the uh, table here in the Reed's Almanac. If you want to have it more accurate, your latitude, than by one degree, you should find it more exactly, and not only by the day, but also by the hour. And this you do at the, on the daily pages on the in the Nautical Almanac. So in this example, you want to know when is it, um, well, what's the declination on the 21st of September at 9.34. So you open up the daily pages on the 21st of September, and then on the very left you look at 9 hours. That's the full hour, and at 9 hours you then move two columns to the right and look at the sun's declination, and you can see that it's north 0 degrees, that information is a bit further up, and 35.2 minutes north. Now, one hour later, at 10 o'clock, one row further down, it says north 0 degrees, 34.2 minutes. So you can see in one hour between 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock, it only changes one minute. One minute is also one minute on latitude, in this case, and one uh, nautical mile. Uh, so 9.34 is it's approximately between 9 and 10, so the eyeball here tells us, so it's somewhere between 35.2 and 34.2, 9.30 is about half in between, so 34.7. This is true for the declination because it moves so slowly. When we then come to other things we need to be more accurate, but always bear in mind um, to get it by one minute is the goal. So that, let's look on the very morning now. So we are still waiting for noon to come. We have our uh, Earth here, we have our position there. There is morning because the Sun is to the east. But we can of course uh, shoot the Sun even in the morning, even if you don't get a latitude here. So when we shoot it with our uh, HS, read off the sextant, then you correct it to get the HO, so the observed altitude. And all you do is, if you want to know the distance between you and the Sun, you take 90 degrees minus the true observed altitude. So when you have done this, you know that you are somewhere um, along this position line in orange, at a certain distance from the position of the Sun, which is called zenith distance, and the position line is 90 degrees to the yellow line, it's 90 degrees to the azimuth. So this is how it is in the morning. 
We also know that the sun does have a declination. It's a bit above the equator in summer and uh, south of the equator in winter. So what happens now is the hours pass and the sun moves on a little bit to just before noon and you get a new uh, zenith distance if you shoot it. And what happens is that the zenith distance now has decreased. You can see that the yellow arrow is shorter than in the very morning. And so the equation ZD equals 90 degrees minus HO remains valid. You have to increase the angle of, on the sextant if you decrease the zenith distance and vice versa. And this makes sense because the more the sun moves towards the um, towards us, the uh, higher up it gets on the sky. So the HO increases, and that's why I said that you could also wait until the sun is on uh, as high as possible. Because look what happens exactly at noon. Exactly at noon, the sun is due south of us. And the azimuth, the direction of to the sun, is in other words south. And here the zenith distance has become a minimum. And the angle on the sextant is a maximum. So either you know when it is noon, which we have calculated in our last chapter, or you wait until the uh, angle becomes a maximum and thus the zenith distance the uh, shortest, meaning that the position of the sun is closest to us. So, we then know whether we are on a position line again. The position line in orange is at a right angle to the azimuth, to the yellow line, to the zenith distance. And since then the declination here is obviously also in a right angle to the equator, that means that the position line is a parallel to the equator because you use two times the green 90 degrees and a parallel to the equator is also called a parallel, namely a latitude. So in my example here I say that let's assume that I have observed an altitude of 50 degrees and that we have looked up in the almanac that the declination is 5 degrees. It's easy then to find the um, our latitude since the latitude is the zenith distance plus the declination, yellow plus blue, and the zenith distance is 90 degrees minus the observed angle, so it's 90 degrees minus 50 degrees plus the declination plus 5 degrees, and in this case it's 45 degrees. Mm -hmm.